Hey guys, this is Mike, and this is the last video of this Kotlin series. So I finally made a Play Store listing, just submitted it, and it should be live on the Play Store. I had to uh, do all this stuff here. <laughs> this is funny to me because uh, I'm too lazy to, most of the time to come up with icons, so I'm reusing all these graphics. And for the feature graphic, this is the like the banner that shows up at the top of the page on your mobile in Google Play. I just created this gigantic level here and just screenshotted it and put it in there. So super lazy on my part, but there it is. And yeah, it's on GitHub. So if you want to go check it out and modify it or extend it or any of that stuff, go ahead. Um, as for differences, since the last video, I did add goals now as a suggestion by someone in a previous video, since I can, I couldn't get the, um, optimal score. I just went with goals instead, which is my personal lowest score. So, um, if you do hit the goal, you will get an extra check mark on your uh, level select screen. I didn't make that many levels, only 36 cuts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not really interested in making levels. Um, yeah, it's not coding and it's not art, it's level designing and I don't know, I'm not enthusiastic about it. Um, anyway, uh, one thing that I did for the uh, goals to help me get the lowest possible score is um, actually after doing the previous video um, where I t discussed about how brute force isn't really a viable option I decided to try to study the game and by study I mean um, I made a bunch of levels that are simple sort of sub problems that I could try to find optimal solutions to for those and hopefully I can find like patterns in the puzzle. Like if I had a row or something like this, if if I had this and I only had one row to fix, then I could go like that or whatever. Basically I was just trying to look for patterns. Um, so long story short, I didn't really <laughs> find anything at all. I came to no conclusions about how to solve these things faster. Uh, well, well, one thing is that um, if I'm getting stuck, like something like this. Wait. Uh, I can't really find an example of it, but basically, if I if if I have a situation where let me just look for a big. Okay, I I guess this is fine. If I have a situation where I'm like this, and uh, I want to fill in these two other ones. Um, I can go here, here, and then I should go back so that I can fill those two in again and then get the rest of them. So something like that. I guess that's the only observation that I really made. Um, the other thing, the one other observation that doesn't really count is that, um, well actually it kind of does count because it helped me sort of uh, verify that I have the lowest score possible. So the thing that I noticed is that, well, the first thing that I noticed was that um, if I solve a puzzle in an even number of moves, in this case eight, I can only solve it in an even number of moves. I can't solve this puzzle in seven moves or nine moves, for example. And same thing with uh, puzzles that have an odd number solution. Um, I'm not sure why and I can't prove it, but uh, that just seems to be the case. Um, but then I, as I was playing through the game, I noticed something else, which is that if you can solve a puzzle in X number of moves, then you can solve that same puzzle in X plus four N, where N is any integer, it could be negative. So a multiple of four from whatever you solved it as. So here I solved this puzzle in 15 moves, which means I can solve it in 19, 23, or I can go the opposite direction, 11 moves. 
like that. So 15 moves. If let me just demonstrate a uh, small example here, like that. I solved it in 19 moves. So that follows this sort of four multiple rule. I can't prove it. I have no idea how to prove it. It's just something that I've noticed. I don't know how to solve this puzzle in 17 moves. I don't know how to solve it in 21. It's always some kind of multiple of four from whatever you solve it as. And I've noticed that for everything else. Not sure why that happens, but I have used it to help me sort of verify the best scores for some levels. Um, for example, uh, there's this one level that I solved. 24. Is that the only 24? Oh, this could be good. So for example, this level I solved in 24 moves. The first time I tried this, I solved it in 32. And I was like, okay, I could probably do better than that. So I kept going at it, and then I solved it in 28 moves. Not 31, not 30, not 29, but 28. And then I kept going at it, and then I figured out that I can solve it in 24 moves. So. You have no idea what's going on there. I'm just starting to see that this formula seems to hold up. I'm not sure why. But uh, yeah, just an observation that I made. Basically, I use that to uh, verify, even though I haven't proved it, that some of the levels that I've made here are optimal. For example, um, this one, I can solve it in eight moves, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six tiles. So. Since there are six tiles I need to step on, the minimum has to be six moves. But I've solved it in eight, which means the other solutions are four, eight, twelve, sixteen, etc. And uh, since I've solved it in eight, I can't go to four because that's below the minimum number of tiles. Then eight has to be uh, optimal. But that's based off of an assumption that x plus four n is valid. So. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm rambling, so that's pretty much it. It's on GitHub. Again, you guys can go check it out on GitHub or the Play Store if you don't want to check out the code. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.